Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. Tom and I have been bringing this show to you for a number of months now under his reign as chair, and actually we've been doing this dating back to 2000. We've done a lot of programs, and every month what we strive to do is focus on a different department, a different department head, and talk about the roles and responsibilities of county government and good work being done. And today, Chris Lewinsky is with us, one of 19 department heads. Chris is our IT director. He's been in the position going almost on two years. I think you said you have a two-year anniversary in June. That's correct. Yeah, so it's great to have you with us, Chris. Thanks, Adam. Good to be here. So let's get right into it. Please start with sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself and your role as our information technology director. Sure. So I was born and raised in Wisconsin. I've lived here my entire life, uh, with the exception of uh, four years that I did a stint in the Coast Guard, but otherwise spent my entire life here. And uh, as you stated, I've been with the county now for about two years. And prior to that, I was the IT director at Lakeshore Technical College. I was out there for about eight years. So. And I understand you're an avid bow hunter and uh, fisherman. I, I, yes, I do like to get outdoors as often as I can. Do you prefer to talk about bow hunting and fishing, or would you rather <laughs> talk about IT services? It's uh, that that's quite a toss up there, but uh, you know, today I think it's IT. I think that's a good idea. Or <laughs> the big guy over there might not be real happy with us. Well, let's get into it then. So, IT director for nearly two years, a lot of important roles and responsibilities. How many staff do you have? What is approximately the size of your annual budget? Sure. So our IT team is a, a team of 10, and that includes myself. Three of those are contract employees. They provide our help desk. Um, as far as our annual budget, it's just over $2 million on, on any given year. And of course, that's a $2 million budget out of about $145 million annual budget for all of Sheboygan counties, right. providing service to about eight, 835 employees. What's the primary role and responsibilities of your department, of your staff? So the mission really of our department is to safeguard all of the county's technological resources as well as provide services to all 19 of those counties. So what that means in terms of responsibilities is, like I said, providing a 24 by 7 help desk and maintaining all of the county's network infrastructure and software systems to keep everybody up and, and uh, working. And when you say keep everyone's software systems up, I imagine a lot of our viewers have a computer at home or a laptop, but to try to put that in perspective. Just how many computers and software systems are you responsible for maintaining? Sure, yeah, sometimes it's, it's hard to keep track of them all. The county has about 600 computers, uh, but you know, a mixture of laptops, desktops and tablets, iPads, as well as some smartphones. Um, as far as the number of software applications, major enterprise applications, we have roughly a dozen, but then there's upwards of 200 other smaller applications that are department specific. And very important systems, for example, uh, emergency response, dispatch. Right, right. Uh, you know, give our viewers a bit of a flavor for the importance or some examples of some sure. of these systems you're supporting. So the, the one that you mentioned, public safety, is, is a, that's a great example of obviously the sheriff's department and then their interaction with all the various public safety agencies within the county. It's absolutely mission critical, 24 by 7, 365 days a year. And the, the way that uh, our law enforcement uh, people use technology today is really pretty amazing. I mean, when you look at a sheriff's deputy and they're out and about in the county, patrolling the county and, and anywhere they are, they've got a constant feed of information. And likewise, in dispatch, our, our dispatchers can see exactly where those officers are within the county. So there's everything from GIS mapping applications to uh, integrations with other departments and even with the state information. So when you think about a deputy officer pulling over a, a motorist, using that license plate information they can get all kinds of information at their fingertips and that's all real time and in this day and age that's very important for officer safety i could just add to that because a couple years ago i did a ride along with the uh, sheriff's deputy and the amount of technology that they had just within their vehicle it's mind-boggling <laughs> it was mind-boggling yes it was but i have to tell you i was with him and he needed to access it 
for in a situation he was involved in, and it was really important that he get that information. These yes. sheriff's deputy vehicles are starting to look like the cockpit of an airplane. Yes. They really are. It's amazing what's yeah. all around them, and they can squeeze in into that seat with all of this IT stuff around them. And I got to believe if something's not working, uh, you and your staff probably are pretty quick to be contacted, and it's urgent. Yeah, it it really is, and and it is challenging because you know most of that information is coming over a, a cellular connection, so. You know, if, if you're familiar with, you know, I mean, cell phone connections sometimes aren't necessarily the strongest depending upon where you are. And, and yeah, you're, you're absolutely correct. If something's not working and, and it's, it's mission critical, we are certainly uh, very quick to hear about it and respond to it. So let's transition into that a little bit. What are some of the key <coughs> challenges that you and your staff face day in and day out? Well, the big one that you hear about in the news all the time and is not unique to Sheboygan County is, is IT security. Um, and that, that's, that's a full-time job in itself, just staying ahead or trying to stay ahead of all of those cyber threats and preventing the malicious attacks and data breaches that, again, we, we read far too often about in the news. Um, and, and you do the best you can, but unfortunately the bad actors that are out there perpetrating these attacks, they're working just as hard. So it's, it's an ongoing battle and you do the best you can. The other big challenge, and it, it kind of speaks to what we were talking about with the public safety software, is the, the degree to which these systems are integrated and depend upon each other for various data feeds, it, it really it contributes to a lot of complexity and it can cause, uh, you know, there's a lot of unforeseen circumstances that come up and when those, when those things happen and you've got a, a data conflict and now you've got a system that's not operating the way it should be, that can affect operations. So I think a big challenge is trying to anticipate those complexities and those unforeseen uh, incidents before they happen and hopefully remediate them before they become a problem. And I know you and your team, you've done a terrific job evaluating our system from top to bottom and identifying weaknesses and opportunities for improvement. And without question, it's gotten better. You've shared with our department head team before, Chris, that I think it was a, within a, a year or two where a neighboring county had a breach in their system where it Correct. was an impact, I think, with how a bill may have been paid or dollars were moved. And maybe just touch on that briefly. Give, give our viewers a flavor for what you're trying to protect the county from. Sure. So much of it has to do with it, it's, it's, it's the simple things. You know, I mean, everybody's familiar with a username and a password. And I know IT sometimes gets a, a bad rap because we're constantly harping on uh, changing your password more frequently and not sharing it with others. But but research shows that a, 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 the vast majority of data breaches are, are something as simple as just a compromised password. The password fell into the wrong hands. The bad actor was able to get access to a system. And then, like you said, it could be anything from moving dollars around to um, maybe obtaining even a, a, a more uh, sensitive password that gets into more sensitive information. So a lot of times it's just disclosing information that, uh, that the county doesn't want uh, shared out there, whether it's, it's a bank account or other more sensitive employee information. And last question before I turn it over to Tom, the, uh, the help desk you mentioned. <coughs> I know personally, and I, and I imagine most employees feel this way, when you come in at the beginning of the day and you fire up that computer and you want to respond to uh, emails or check information or perhaps write some correspondence or whatever it may be, and that system is down or your computer's not working or the outlook isn't, you're not able to access your emails or whatever it is, I know personally uh, that's not a good moment and of course Right. We reach out to the help desk and where you have really made some nice progress is the help desk questions in the past, at least years ago, it could be, it could be hours if not days <coughs> before you got a response. And now it seems as though uh, your team is just right on these types of initiatives and helping get people up and going. Uh, what, what's, what's happened there? How have you been so effective in improving that service? Well, and I thank you for saying that. I mean, we certainly understand, like you said, how dependent all of us are on our computers and those systems. So um, 
I, I don't know that we've done anything a lot different other than just utilizing better tools, making sure that as those requests come in and those incidents are identified, we're prioritizing them properly, we're getting them assigned to the, the appropriate staff members that can resolve that particular incident, and just making that a top priority. We know that without those systems up and running, the county can't work. So we just make it a priority that, you know, even if we've got projects going on or other things that we're working on, we understand we all have uh, a job to do and we have to kind of sometimes drop what we're doing to, to take care of those issues. Thank you, Chris. Tom. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Chris, I know <clears throat> you've been pretty busy the last 18 months in the IT department. There's been some big projects going on. I'm going to say a couple of them and then I and ask you just to respond and tell us about it because I know they have a big impact on the county sure. and the people we're serving. Uh, the first one would be the Ring of Fiber. That, that's a huge project. That was a big project. Um, so uh, for those of our reviewers who are not familiar with that project, uh, that was a $2.5 million project that the county engaged uh, in, with, uh, in conjunction with the city of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan Area School District. And that was about an 18 month project uh, that the construction was completed last fall. And uh, the end result was we've got 23 miles of underground fiber optic cable that we share with the city and the school district. And uh, what that has allowed us as the county to do is we've connected most of our facilities <coughs> with that, that fiber optic network. Um, it's given us a lot more bandwidth to and from the internet. And because of that, we're, we've been able to uh, share information faster as well as now start to leverage some of the opportunities that are available with cloud resources. Thank you. Uh, next one would be the uh, data center remodel project, which is another big project. That's, that is a big project, and that's been going on now for a couple of years. And the, the, the big push there is it's, it's all about efficiency and, uh, and, and saving energy costs. So we are in the process of shrinking our existing data center uh, virtualizing a lot of our servers so we're using less energy and then because of the, the smaller and more efficient use of the space, we're able to save uh, a significant amount on cooling costs each year too. Yeah, when, you, when I walked through there that time, you could tell all the heat that some of those machines were putting out and they obviously had to be cooled. So, you know, when you're putting out heat and then having to cool it, that's got to be expensive. It's, it is. And, and, you know, that is critical to the operation of a data center. Um, a lot of that equipment is fairly temperature sensitive, so we like to keep it at a pretty pretty consistent 70 to 72 degrees, and, and it does take a lot of air conditioning to make that happen. Um, another one, the IT disaster recovery project. That's another project that is, uh, is, has been kind of driven by our fiber optic network. In other words, that was a dependency that we needed to finish first. But now building the disaster recovery site, we're really putting the county in a good position that if there ever were a situation where our primary data center was damaged or otherwise rendered um, inoperable, we would be able to pretty quickly fail over to that disaster recovery site and of course keep the county working. As Adam stated before, there's nothing more challenging than coming into work and finding out your computer's not working. And this allows us to, to uh, prevent that from happening on a larger scale. A number of these are quite quite costly. Um, they are. And, and how do you go about when you make recommendations to the different committees, uh, how do you go about when you look to justify how much you're spending for your return relatively? And that, that's a key point for all of our projects. Obviously, it's got to make sense financially because technology is expensive. And uh, if you can't realize those efficiencies that will cause those projects to, to kind of pay themselves back over time, it's really questionable whether or not you should undertake those. But what we do is we look at what the success factors for the outcomes are. And if we can show, like I said, a positive return on our investment and, and payback in, in a few years, it's generally something that I will take to uh, our committee and, and our board and recommend that we move forward with. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. You know, another project that Chris tackled in collaboration with our finance director the past year was looking at our allocation process. And of course, with 19 departments, uh, 18 of them are relying on you to share, well, what's it going to cost for these IT services and the upgrades in IT technology and supporting these computer systems, what have you. And I was really pleased with the leadership you provided in drilling down into our annual budget development process and 
that piece that you take the lead on, you know, what will each department be charged for their IT services? You know, what's that allocation going to be? And Tom, as you know, that's probably an area over the years we've, we've heard some grumbling about because no one wants to be charged for maintaining their computers, mm -hmm. what have you, yet it's a real cost, needs to be paid. Uh, Chris, what did you do to improve upon that process? Sure, and and that was my understanding as well, is that I think there was a, a fair amount of contention over the years, and, and, and obviously there's no perfect way to address those costs that are, unfortunately, they're very real, they're very necessary, but as you stated, nobody necessarily likes to, to pay the bill for those. But I took a look at how we were calculating, and it was, it was much more, um, it was just kind of across the board. It, there, there wasn't really any weight provided to actual utilization. So what I did is I, is I took the information that we had and I started looking at basically three things. You know, the number of computers that any given department has, um, the number of help desk tickets that they enter every year. I mean, that's a big indicator of utilization. I mean, some departments use our help desk ex extensively, others not so much. They're, they're pretty much self-functioning. And then the, the last component, the third component, was really taking a look at some of what I would call the direct costs. So there are indirect costs that are borne by everybody in, the, in, the, in, our, in our county government just because that's what it takes to keep the lights on. But other departments, and I think the, the one we talked about earlier, the Sheriff's Department in particular, they have some very, very specialized software systems and equipment that aren't really used by anybody else in the county. And so we, we took that into consideration when calculating their IT allocation. Of course, there are other departments that have specialized systems and software like that too, but it's much more indicative of how any given department is actually using our IT resources. You know, and I would just add on that too, and, and <clears throat> there's no scenario there that's perfect Correct. as far as allocating, but I think it increases the amount of ownership that it people does. have in that part of the IT. I don't know if you want to... Well, and that was, I think that's going to be one of those maybe unintended consequences, but I had the same thought that when I revise the IT allocation from what it was, my hope is that it will also cause department heads and department managers to start to think about, because when you see that bill, this is what we're paying for IT services every year, and some of these are expenses that we can control. Um, it, I'm, my hope is that they'll look at that and say, you know, per, potentially there's some opportunities here for sure. some savings. Well, I know it's a lot more transparent now, and not only do policymakers, but county board supervisors appreciate that, but in particular the department heads appreciate it. So my compliments, Chris. Thank you. As you look forward, uh, what are some of the key projects or initiatives that you're looking to tackle in 2017, 2018? We've got a couple big ones coming up this year. First and foremost is going to be replacing our 20-year-old phone system with a new VoIP system, VoIP standing for Voice Over Internet Protocol. It's a fancy way of saying our phone calls are going to be going out over the internet instead of traditional phone lines. Um, it's going to make the, the county's phone system a lot more scalable, and uh, we're also looking at it's probably going to cut our, our monthly phone bill by about 50% if everything goes well. Uh, the other one is we're going to be moving our email system into the cloud, and that too I'm excited. It's going to allow our, our uh, county employees to access their email uh, more easily from outside uh, their, their workplace and on virtually just about any device that they might be carrying. Greg Wegeman, our finance committee chairman, who I mean, really does a nice job leading that committee and is a strong leader on the county board, he recently shared during a finance committee meeting that in his private uh, business, they went uh, uh, VoIP, and he said, you know, there are a couple of pitfalls or, or obstacles that they needed to overcome. As you go forward with this project, what do we need to be cautious about? Right. I think with with any project of, of that scale, when you think about, you know, there's there's roughly six to seven hundred phones within the county, and again, a very very mission critical system. I, I think just planning and what we're going to tackle uh, or how we're going to tackle that project is doing more of a, a phased rollout 
where we're not going to do it. It's not just going to happen on one day everybody comes in, they've got a brand new form. We're going to roll this out by department or in some cases by building. And we will even have a parallel deployment where for a week or two you'll potentially have two phones on your desk. You'll have your own old phone and your new phone. So as we work through some of those hiccups that invariably will uh, come with a project of that nature, you'll still have the old phone available for usage. Any other uh, significant IT projects on the horizon? Uh, the big one for, for 2018 that I'm kind of kicking around right now would be a complete and uh, total redesign of our website. Mm -hmm. yep. And I know that you've been working with Chairman Wagner on the county board chambers as well yes, and yes, just raising yes. the bar and improving that system. What's in play there? Uh, yeah, so there, uh, as, as you know, the, with the county board meetings once a month, uh, a lot of their, their business is, is uh, done with, with voting and uh, our voting system that we currently have in the county board chambers, is it's, it's getting uh, rather aged. It's, it's about 15 years old and there's, we're starting to see some reliability issues. So we're looking at going to a new voting system that will be uh, based on, on iPads or tablets, and uh, so it'll all be digital, very easy to use, and uh, uh, much more reliable and scalable than our current system is. And all of our board members are using iPads now, and I can recall, what's it been, five years or so, that, like that some yeah. came <clears throat> kicking and screaming a little sure. bit to that adjustment, but I, I think they'd kick and scream now if you tried to take that iPad I away think so from them. Too. It's oh. been very successful. Without question, the information that can be given to a county board supervisor uh, before a meeting can be so much more updated and, and, and quicker. Well, I, it's just, just a big improvement. Finance committee meetings is nothing to have 100 mm -hmm. pages of documents right. and there it's all before them to scroll through versus before our county clerk or somebody would have been making copies of all that. Right. It's a right. great improvement. And speaking of timing, you know, you mentioned the county board chamber system is about 15 years or old now and some people might be thinking, well, that's not that old, but I think most people are aware that technology is changing now so rapidly. Uh, I mean, sometimes I, I think it's got to be almost challenging to plan more than three or four years because it changes so much things that will be developed or improved upon that haven't even been contemplated. How do you, you're closer to this than any of us, how, how do you see <coughs> things changing in county government in the next five years, or what challenges do you see on the horizon in the next five years as you look at IT technology? Well, Adam, you're absolutely right where it, it really is difficult to think more than five years out. So we, we generally, we don't even try. We try to look at you know bigger trends. And the one that I see that's going to be affecting everybody, not just county government, but county government as well is mobility. So as more and more people are tied into smartphones and other smart devices like that, I think that's really going to change the way the county operates and how we deliver services. So when you think of anything from uh, a boat launch permit to issuing sanitary permits to paying our property taxes, I think more and more of that will be offered on mobile devices and that flexibility and reach will allow us to serve more county citizens better and, and more efficiently. A lot of people used to come to the admin building and wait in line for things and you don't see that to the degree you used to five, ten no. years ago, but as you said, I, I think we're going to see even more advances to make it more efficient and, and convenient. convenient for people. Right. Yeah. right. Well, we're just about out of time, but one question I wanted to ask you that wasn't on our summary sheet of questions. I'm just going to take a risk and throw it out oh there. Oh my. Chris. You're, you're going to be celebrating your two-year anniversary in June, so you're still relatively new as a department head and a leader in Sheboygan County. What's been your impression of working for Sheboygan County? What's, the, what's your team like at IT? What's the culture like as a county? Just overall, what's yeah. been your impression? That's a great question. Uh, I, my, my team is, is fantastic. Um, and. Uh, it's, it's interesting because of, of the 10 of us, roughly 50% of us or half of us have been with the county two years or less. So, so it's, it's uh, and, and that has, there, there's two sides to that coin, of course. There's, um, we don't have a lot of the historical knowledge, but at the same time, we have a lot of fresh 
insights and, and, and new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things. And I see that throughout the county. I see a lot of fresh perspective. I see a lot of collaboration going on and, and creative problem solving. So, so my two years with the county has really been wonderful in that regard and getting to work with other departments and other department heads. Good to hear. Well, we're certainly glad to have you aboard. Uh, you've been, you quickly earned the respect of your peers and coworkers, and, and we're just glad to have you as part of this team, Chris. So thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Tom. Sure. And speaking of problem solving and collaboration, in addition to many of the good projects that Chris has been a part of, uh, one we didn't mention that's in play is the building of a new transportation complex, and Chris and his team will have some involvement with the IT development there as well, but uh, April of this year, uh, you'll see if you go out on Highway J and 67, 67 toward Rocky Knoll, uh, corner of 67 and J, you'll see a new county transportation complex being built. The ground's already been uh, raised and the fill brought in by our highway department employees. They've done a tremendous job. And uh, bolt construction and quashes construction will be out there starting in April to actually do the build out. So that's gonna be in play for the next year. That's gonna consolidate three facilities into one. And next month, our building services director, Jim Tabiste, is gonna be here to talk about the immense planning and orchestration of a project like that. And not only has Jim been very involved with the plans for the new transportation complex, but there's so many other building projects that he's involved in. In fact, some might say he's stretched a little thin. <laughs> so we look forward to having Jim with us next month. And until then, thank you so much for joining us. Have a good April, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.